Today, we become legends. Smile's been around for over a decade at this point, and like any live service game, there's been amazing additions as well as terrible changes that are almost universally hated by the player base. Well, this video will discuss what you guys thought were the worst changes ever made to Smite. I made a community post asking for your opinions on the topic, then took the most popular responses from that and let you all have your say by voting on which you thought were the worst changes and which weren't so bad. In this video, I'll be going over the 15 worst changes ever made as voted by you guys in ascending order of awfulness, so without further ado, let's jump in. So kicking it off with the least bad of these 15 changes, we have the removal of Siege and Clash and the addition of Slash. This one scored just 2.79 out of 5 on average and it warms my heart a little bit to see this one make the list. I was a huge fan of Siege and while Slash is basically Clash 2.0, which is fine, it really doesn't feel like Siege at all. Just some Mayan themes and some juggernauts, that's it. Nothing of what made Siege special like the 4v4 element with two separate 2v2 lanes. This one isn't too high on the list though and many people rated it as not a bad change at all, so let's move into number 14. Next up is the removal of god stats from loading frames, a simple change that in my opinion was just kind of pointless. I think the justification for this was that people were getting harassed if they had bad score lines or high kills and played poorly and stuff like that, but you could already hide these if you wanted to anyway, so I don't see a reason why this was even removed. But of course, it's by no means a game changing thing, so I can see why it's lower on the list. So another one coming in slightly lower than I expected at number 13 is the 9.5 time to kill update, where all gods received more base health and protections, as well as power being lowered across the board for most items in the game. This was a very controversial patch, as it did seem to address the burst problem at the time, but ultimately it didn't really fix anything, and we're back in a meta now just a year later that is just as bursty, if not more so. And tanks are in a worse spot now than they were then, since the extra base health on backliners combined with the removal of power from solo and items means tanks can't threaten backliners like they used to. I can see why this update is here, and I can also see why it's lower on the list, as it did aim to solve a real issue within the game, but just executed it poorly in my opinion. Another change that aimed to impact the game as a whole were the comeback mechanics changes of 10.3. I can see where they were coming from with this, but again, I feel it was just executed poorly and at the wrong time. The game was already very easy to stall out and games were going longer than Season 9 because there were less objectives to force fights over due to the removal of things like Indra Scepter, the Trebuchets, the Draugr, etc. from Season 9. I just feel like these anti-snowball changes were redundant in 10.3 because the game was already not that snowbally. These changes were half reverted in the following patch which just proves they weren't really the best idea. Again, not super game changing so I can see why it's lower on the list but these changes were definitely unnecessary in my opinion. Another very recent change at number 11, there does seem to be some recency bias in this vote for sure. As here we have the 10.3 healing update changes. For me, this one is actually a bit too high. I overall think these changes weren't that bad and it was mainly a few key outliers that made this patch feel so terrible. Of course, I'm mainly talking about team healers like Afro, Hell and Guan Yu. Sure, some gods got sort of gutted with no real compensation like Kamazots for example, but most of these gods have received some buffs in 10.4 and 10.5 to help them out a little for that reduced healing. And I think overall reducing the healing in the game was a good idea. I say this all the time, but I personally would love to see most heals in the game become shields and reserve actual healing for a few specific gods to make it their key strength. Shields solve the issue of teams disengaging and healing back to full because it's temporary health, and now that we have plenty of anti-shielding items in the game, it wouldn't be an issue. But yeah, according to you guys, this patch was the 11th worst change ever made to Smite. So a quick and simple one at number 10 is we have the addition of Rituals. These were added back in Season 4, so for those who don't know what they are, Rituals were basically one-use relics that you would buy in your consumable slot late game. Intended to help teams end in the hyper late game, these items were instantly abused. The main two that saw widespread abuse were the in-combat blink effect called Flickering Ritual and the Teleport to Gods effect called Rallying Ritual. An in-combat blink just made for ridiculous stuff in team fights, especially on gods that could already build blink and double it up, and Rallying Ritual basically gave any team a Yana slash Horus ult effect where they could all TP to a tank running into the enemy titan room and just backdoor. These items completely broke the game on their introduction and were removed just two patches later, and since patches used to be every two weeks back then, not every four weeks like now, they lasted the equivalent of one modern day patch before being yeeted into Smite history. Absolutely one of the single worst changes ever made. 
you guys are right on this one. Another pretty simple one at number 9, as you guys voted for the removal of items made at year 10 launch. I have to say, I personally think this is too high on the list, as a lot of removed items were pretty useless and old, and it made room for newer, cooler items to be added, like the revamped Druid Stone Tree, and probably a few new ones in the new season in 10.6 that should be dropping fairly soon. But yeah, I do still miss some of the items that were deleted, like Void Shield and Stone, and if you were a fan of those items, I can see why you guys think this was a bad change. I'm just viewing it from a pragmatic point of view in that you can't just keep adding more and more items without removing some, the game would get way too bloated and complex. Next up at number 8 we have a super OG mechanic from back in Smite's closed beta, Focus. I'm sure many of you watching don't even know what this was, so here's a brief explainer. Focus was a stat you could buy, like penetration or cooldown reduction that came on items. Some items had a lot, some had less, some passives gave it, etc. Focus increased all of your CC durations or potency based on how much focus you had. It was essentially reverse CCR. Yeah, I'm sure from that description alone, anyone who wasn't aware of focus will now agree it was one of the worst changes ever made to Smite. A couple seconds of good CC will just kill you in Smite, it's literally the reason every squishy buys beads every game without fail. And granted, the burst damage was probably less back in 2013 due to power creep, it's still not at all fun to get frozen by Ymir for 4 seconds because he stacks max focus. Terrible mechanic, very glad it was yeeted into the void long ago. Back to a simple one that probably a lot of you have heard of though, as it's a bit of a legend in Smite history and I've covered it multiple times on my channel before, yep, Hasten Fatalis. Specifically, them adding 10 pen to it for no reason and making it picked up on literally every ADC to the point it was removed from the game because it was so unfun. Honestly, I do feel this is too high on the list, as it's just one item that the game is probably better off without, but it was a really dumb idea to give it free pen and ultimately that buff was what got it removed from the game, as people realised how unfun haste hunters were when literally every ADC and their bomb was buying this first item. And right after Fatalis, we have its sister item, Golden Bow. Another case where hi randomly buffs a niche item so it becomes so broken it's a force build on every god which makes people realise how dumb of an effect it is and they remove it from the entire game a few patches later. Of course, we now have Golden Blade restricting hunters from accessing this very powerful effect in the same way we now have Hasten Katana and Ring that do the same for Fatalis. This item ruined the entire meta for a good while, with ADCs being 2-3 to three levels up on everyone because of how effectively they could farm using Golden Bow. It's specifically its tier 2 throwing dagger that made the biggest splash where it got buffed to get a mini version of the full item's passive while being buyable at level 1 with potions. Yeah, any ADC in the game could full clear the wave with just basic attacks at level 1. This is absolutely deserving of being so high on the list I am on, it was significantly worse than Fatalis. At number 5 we have a bit of a cop out as it's not really one specific change but many of you commented and liked this idea of the game being dumbed down in general. Some specific examples you guys gave were the removal of all the cool conquest elements from season 9 like trebuchet and interest scepter, removal of cool god and item mechanics because they couldn't balance them and just made them boring generic dumb effects that are easier to balance, as well as the previously mentioned anti snowball mechanics in 10.3 that reward people for playing badly early on. For me this is a little high on the list since I don't think the game is being dumbed down that much. It definitely is, but I don't think it's a big enough issue to be the number 5 worst change ever made. But hey, this is your guys list and not mine and you think it's a big issue for Smite. Next up is one I very much do agree with though and it's very relevant at the moment, the removal of power from bruiser items. So this is emblematic of a wider issue of what to do with solo laners. They clearly don't want tanks to be too tanky because they 360 no scoped the mitigation build within 2 weeks and then after it being dead and buried for 3 months they added a mitigation cap to a build that hadn't existed for months. But on the flip side of the coin, they also don't want tanks to be able to deal damage and threaten squishies. Hi res, you need to pick one. Can tanks actually be durable or can tanks threaten squishies with damage? At the moment they can do neither of these and it's leading to a big issue mainly for solo lane. And the removal of power from almost all bruiser items that solo laners typically pick up made this problem much worse. This in combination with the 9.5 update that added about 50% effective health to backliners means tanks can't threaten the backline like they used to. But anyway, in the interest of not making this video another tank hate rant, let's move on. So global brawling anti-heal is next, which is surprisingly high, but I can totally see why you guys think it was a terrible change. It was very much a band-aid solution to a very specific problem of teams disengaging and healing up way too effectively, usually through team healers like Hell, Guan, and Afro. 
remind you of anything? The knock-on effects of this change were huge for self-sustaining gods like Amaterasu or Sun Wukong though, as it nerfed their main way to sustain when it was never a problem in the first place. It just got blindsided by a change that was trying to solve a completely different problem and didn't even solve it well in my opinion. I can definitely see why Brawling took such a high spot on this list. And the penultimate spot was the removal of the chest reward system for completing games. You used to be able to get reward chests for either winning or just completing games, I can't remember which, I think it was winning. Uh, these chests would give you random cosmetics and stuff, but after I think 20 wins, you got a godlike chest, which contained most of the regular skins in the game, allowing free to play players to essentially farm some free random skins every week just by playing the game. It was an awesome reward system that incentivized people to play and try to win, which got more people into queues and less people trolling games. My only guess for why this was removed is the high risk bottom line. Giving away too many free skins will eat into gem sales. That's the sad reality of why this system was removed. And you guys think it's the second worst change ever made to Smite. I have to say, I do kind of agree, even as someone who plays Smite for their job and buys far too many gems. And finally, we've made it to the worst ever change made to Smite, the only one to score above 4 out of 5 on average according to over 400 respondents. And yes, as you probably guessed, it's terrible reworks. Specifically, Persephone and to a lesser extent Erlang Shen were the main ones you guys mentioned. And yeah, these are the two worst reworked blunders in my history, in my opinion. Probably followed by Nuwar on my personal list. I really liked Olva. Erlang Shen was just basically killed in his rework and is now just a boring sustain bot that plays way too much for the long fight. And Persephone, well, we all know what they did to her. I have a whole video on it if you're interested, but the gist of it is that they took a complex, interesting, and skill testing god design that was overperforming at high levels of play and performing badly in lower levels and made her into a boring generic burst mage with nothing interesting but is much more balanceable. Revert these two reworks, Hi-Rez. They were a travesty. Give Persephone a new passive, though. The old passive was very frustrating and cringe, but the rest was fine. And that's it for the top 15 worst changes ever made to Smite according to you guys. Let me know your personal thoughts down below. Which change would you personally rate as the overall worst? I'll be interested to see some of your personal takes and reasons why in the comments. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.